In the previous video, we have created this player movement script to make sure that we can, sp we can split responsibilities of the player script into smaller, more specialized classes. So make sure that you have the player script and player movement script opened in Visual Studio. And what we can do now is, for uh, first let's delete everything from the player movement. It will be a mono behavior uh, with the empty content. What we are going to do is, uh, I'm going to move our player side by side with the player movement script and I'm going to go to the player and for sure we need to have the access to the rigid body so let's cut it out from the player and paste it to the player movement and get the reference from it you know, from the awake so the player awake let's cut it out and let's paste it to our player movement so we have the reference to our rigid body 2D let's slide it down in the player to find any place that we were using the rigid body to move our player we can see that we were using it in the move player method. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a new public void move player method in our player movement. Let's pass to it vector to movement vector. Okay, and that's it. And what we are going to do is cut out the line from a rigid body velocity and paste it into our player movement inside our player movement script. Okay. Now it is complaining that we do not have movement speed. So let's slide up in our player and cut out the movement speed, so the float, from the player class to the player movement class. So it will store the movement speed and the reference to the rigid body. Great. Let's slide down in our player to see what has changed. Well, for starters, we have cut out the possibility to move our player. And beside that, everything works fine. So what we are going to do is slide up to our player in our player script and we are going to create a public player movement reference let's call it player movement and now all we need to do is pass to our player movement or rather get the reference from it so maybe in start let's pass player movement equals get component of type player movement to get the reference for it or we can assign it through Unity Inspector. Okay, I can see that we have squiggly red line in our player movement, so I'm going to save it, and it should be gone. Great, so we have our reference in our player to our player movement. I'm going to capitalize this to use camel case, so player movement. Okay, I'm going to copy it, slide down to where we have called the move player, and we are going to paste it here, player movement dot move player. And we are going to pass to it our movement vector. Now we haven't done much, but we have separated the code to move our rigid body. We can delete the commented version because move position is only used for the kinematic bodies or as uh, the documentation says so. So that's why we are using the velocity to move our dynamic player. And we have refactored our player movement to use the rigid body. And we do not have the reference to our rigid body anywhere else. So that's a start. Let's go back to Unity. Great. And what we can do is simply choose our player in our hierarchy and drag here the player movement. And that's how we have separated the functionality of moving the player outside of the player script. And now it is in our player movement. Let's set the movement speed to 3. Let's try pressing play and let's see if everything works as it worked before. Yes, it does. It may, might be a bit slower, but still it works. So great. Now it is time to refactor the rest of the code so that we have split responsibilities uh, from the player into a separate, more specialized classes. So that's what we are going to do in the next video. If you are enjoying this tutorial, be sure to leave a like, leave a comment. If you have any questions or suggestions, I will be glad to read them. Okay, see you in the next video.